Today, one of our Roamers John is going to show you how to service your MIC hitch the right way. Let's get started by removing the mechanism from the chamber. So these things require very little maintenance, really. And, um, and initially, <clears throat> once we get them set up and use them for a while and then do this maintenance, it's probably, I wouldn't even worry about it for another five years or so. Mm -hmm. This has got so little movement that it just can't, it really can't get into much trouble. And then there's a greased, this shaft comes through here and it's greased in these, in these urethane bushings. And again, uh, if this is tight, this is not real tight, but, but you know, that prevents water from getting in there and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll take that apart and grease this again. Okay. And set up the tension on it. Kind of grease thing. Uh, I've just on this one. I just used the uh, red, uh, red, uh, red and tacky. Okay. So um, anyway, these you know they've been really trouble free, and uh, I'm gonna go the only thing you have to do when you use them is periodically just shoot them with a little bit of uh, dry lube silicone. And other than that, I noticed you mentioned that uh, your bushings here were starting to come apart a little bit. Yeah, I don't have any more of those with me, but I'll I'll get some. And, okay. Yeah. It's really not a problem. There's a big wear surface in there that's fine. So okay. So anyway, let's uh, let's take it apart. Ooh, I never had them apart. Yeah. <laughs> Learning experience. Was I right that if it's loose, you just tighten? Yeah. Do that and tighten the nut and yeah. tighten back. Yeah, that's right. We don't want any linear plate in there at all. And, uh, and and we want to have tension on it. Otherwise, it'll just get twisted or something. So yeah, it needs to be tight. And uh, you can tighten this up to about 50 foot pounds or so, just enough that it really makes it difficult to turn, and that's fine. And it's locked in place with that set screw. And then, of course, this, this uh, cotter pin keeps it from coming clear off if it ever began to back off. This doesn't hold it, obviously, in its, in its uh, tension. It just holds it from coming clear out. So John, if you can't turn it at all like that without a pro, like without a pry bar, does that mean it's just too tight? Yeah, uh, it, it, there really is. I've never seen one that was too tight. I mean, it, you could get it down to where you couldn't turn it by hand, and it would still be fine. You know, it's, we just I don't. I can't turn mine by hand at all. Oh well, it might be a little tighter than necessary. I get on a crowbar. Oh well, that's pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm jumping on it. I don't think it'll hurt anything, but it's unbelievably or it's unnecessarily tight. I may move mine to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, you were talking about that yesterday. I never thought about the pressure being, you know, not on yeah, the bolt. Yeah, pushing it against the plate. Rather than now, of course, you can't do that in this case because it's it's on this special adapter bracket. But on the on the block here, you certainly can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there you go. Aspen. Never seen the inside of one of these. Always wanted to. Oh, I forgot to take the set screw loose. You can see how much good that's doing in this case. I was able to take it clear off and went out. Sure when I go back. Yes, let's make sure mine's perfect. Okay. <laughs> well, we could do that, I guess. Yeah, I was afraid to take it off, figuring That's the spring is going to shoot it out. Yeah. <laughs> I had set it there to hang my flag. <laughs> just looking for it. We came up with a new class. We just came from the shooting range. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going right to be a combination of shooting range, hooking a, a hitch up while you're you're shooting and oh, hooking oh. up. <laughs> On the run. And then you got to back up and kill the aliens. Well, you never know when you might run into that situation. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Out there in the middle of the boonies, you know, they might come with a white light. To... That's great. Oh, okay. okay, so it's just a... Uh, okay, so here we are. It's just a shaft, and it's just got a little bit of grease on it. It just has very minimal grease, but you can see it's not worn. It's just, you know, the grease is not much on there, so it's time. Mm -hmm. We'll have more on it when we're done. And you can also see, Nancy, that there's a lot of surface area for that to, to work oh, yeah. you know, without that. Yeah. So even though it's even though looks it's flaking looks off a little, bit. looks a little frayed, it's okay. Yeah. yeah okay. This is really strong, and it, you know it's good steel, and it's uh, you can see that there's the machine marks are still there. It's not it's not worn. Mm. 
shined up a little it's bit. Like high grade steel. Yeah. Yeah. So is that cast as one piece? Yeah, no. Yeah, or, yeah forged as and one And then they forged as one piece, then they machine it. Machine and, it. And heat treat it. Mm. And so these have been uh, DOT tested and certified for, for American Highways. And they test these at 40, over 40,000 pounds mm. in, in three different axes of pull. Doesn't break. 40,000 pounds. So. Well, the weak point would be the U-joint, I suppose. Is it true that this U-joint is a standard U-joint that if it ever failed, you could... They call it a 10-ton truck U-joint, but they don't specify the part number. Um, but you can go to Napa and get them, apparently. Really? Yeah. But nobody's ever going to have one of those fail, but you mm -hmm. could uh, get another one. And then this is designed differently than than uh, on a drive line in a truck, for instance, where you have these snap rings that pop in here and that's, that keeps it from moving each way to come out on a, on a truck setting. And this one, you have a blind hole on one side and a screw-in nut on the other side. So you take that out and un unscrew Yeah. And the reason you have it this way is so you can tighten this nut down and expand this slightly. Which that's what gives you the preload and that's why it stays pointed where you want to point it. Because you're loaded up by tightening this, this cap nut. So and both of them have that on. Yeah, right, for both sides. So if you ever did have to change this um, U-joint, then you pop out this rubber piece and you heat this up to about 200 degrees with a propane torch, for instance, and then you can just unscrew that out of there and take it apart. Is it, uh, is it a nut or a... It, it's, it's yeah, square. put it on the outside. It's a, it's, well, it's a plug, I guess you'd call it. So can we cut the sprayed section off? Mm. We probably could. Or rip it off? Here. Well, that one. That one's a little yeah. tougher. Oh, you just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> BS. We'll pick you up next week. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll send some provisions out. <laughs> right. Yeah, we're in the outback here. Don't be doing stuff help, like uh, that. You're going to get in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, look at that. That is one thing of a socket. Yeah. Is that for a hitch? Yeah, that's for the hitch and for this nest that we're just working on. One and seven eighths. This is the same as, as, as on the stud for the uh, on on the receiver side on the truck. Is there any uh, issues with uh, using a weight distribution hitch? Like I have the Easy Hitch EZ out of Provo. Is there any issues with using that with this? I've I never had any. No. It's fine. This works really well with the uh, weight distribution hitch. But you do have to, uh, one thing on the truck, it's got the receiver piece that this plugs into. Yeah. That has to constantly point back. So it has to be indexed in so that it can't turn. Yeah. Where with a ball, you know, you just tighten it up, doesn't matter where it is. So there's a square washer that we weld under the, the hitch head that indexes that receiver and points it back. And I have those washers if you ever need one. Yeah, and then and then I don't like anybody to use a weight distribution hitch unless they're using the six-ton model. That's what I have. We have the yeah, we have the four point five ton. It's rated for it, but I'd rather not do it. These are so strong; they'll never break, no matter what. Pretty simple, huh? Yeah, that's actually good in a place when you're out and about, right? Put that washer in there. Yeah. <laughs> but I can't imagine you'd ever have an emergency grease failure. If we had... <laughs> <laughs> so that's a Teflon nut, right? It's got a Teflon. Yeah, this is a, a nylon nut. Nylon, nylon, yeah. Yeah. That's just one style of a locking nut, yeah. but it um, it's not quite enough to rely on it completely. To and so it's got the set screw as well. And then, of course, you know, it's got the, the uh, cotter pin in there, which that doesn't hold it in its torqued position, but it keeps it from coming clear off. Three levels of... Uh, yeah, it really doesn't seem much trouble, but I do notice once in a while I'll see these that have a little bit of linear play, just a little bit, you know, just a sixteenth or something, where this is backed off enough to give just a little bit of movement in there. and. We don't want that. Just tighten her down then? Yeah, just tighten her down. Well, you know, loosen the... Well, mine, uh, yes. about a year ago, it started to just droop on its own and was just too loose. fall down? 
Well, no, this whole thing was here. So I just tighten that nut up. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think you just need to loosen it. Yeah, you know, if this was if this was off to the side like that. Yeah, that's what it was doing. Yeah, so that's that's a function of this. Where if it's ugh, <laughs> if it's drooping this way here, then it's a function of these being loose. I've never had one do that, but uh, this sometimes will get a little bit loose. For some reason, I thought there was like this big spring in there. So did I. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a it's really spring. And I was nervous to take it apart because yeah. I go, it's going to go boom. There might be something <laughs> really cool in there. Yeah, it's going to be beyond our control. So you know, this just kind of snugged that up good. <clears throat> it doesn't. There's no really no torque value on it, and you can see that you know, that's that's pretty resistive to turning, and that's fine. After a few thousand miles, it might be a little bit less. Mm -hmm. that's fine. You want it that hard? No, that's fine. Yeah. This already has some kind of Loctite. It's really stiff, so I'm not going to mess with that. I try to add more. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to Loctite the nut because that nut's so big that I might not be able to get it back off again to Loctite it. So mm -hmm. this, this is fine. Yeah, you guys just tell them on mine, I got tired of getting grease in my pants, so I have one of these ball hitch covers, the little rubber things, Yeah, and then stick it on the top there. There you go. Well, I still like it. You know, there's a lot of the Cruise Master or the E45s, what is it? Yeah, the old 45. And the hitch easy and stuff, but it's still, you have to center it over there. Yeah, it's tough. I like it, my backup camera, and I yeah. just, as long as it's it level. Go. The only key is, I, I, when the truck's away, I try to figure out, I'm still trying to figure out how to get to a point where I know it's level with the truck, but it's always different. So. Yeah, the DL45, and it's just another little sort of difference about it, where the whole latching mechanism is separate from the flexing mechanism here. You know, this is all needle bearings in here. Where with the DL45, it's a big hole that sits over a pin, and that's where the actual flexing is as well. So you're disconnecting that every time you do it, and that's all greasy. And if there's going to be wear, it's going to be there. It's going to be wear there, you know. So this one, it doesn't wear where it flexes. Is how I'm trying to say? How steep of a angle have you hooked dump at? Can you have you hooked? Well, up like until you push the. So the trailer starts going sideways. You, know, you can hook up at any angle. You know. And, Once and, I started using Houdini spray and sprayed that yeah. and the hitch, then I no no longer had a problem going off to this side. And yeah, it's important. Up. It's important to put some dry lube on it periodically. You can see this. These are the contact points, and you know, a little bit of lube in there goes a long way. Anything with the receiver, we should be aware of. Of mm -hmm. uh, uh, just yeah. just the lube the handle okay, the and uh, and you know the pivot point. Those, and every once in a while, I get a call from somebody that jackknifed too tight and bent the handle. That happens more often than it should. And the, the handle design is such that it kind of lends itself to that, I guess. And, and Can we get parts from you? Oh, yeah, 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 and I have handles in stock. And there's gonna be a new handle design that has a, like a pivot in it or something, so that won't happen so much anymore. But if it bends, it's gonna, part of its bend is gonna be right here where it actually grabs this. And I don't think it's a good idea to straighten them back out and then reuse them. So, because that's a highly critical spot and that, that handle is, is heat treated. So if you bend it, well, a minor bend or something, but if you bend it, it's better to get another one. Eventually. Yeah. So far just to get home, you could hammer it out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're back. Oh, so now let's grease it. Yeah, my receiver, uh, um, Got a little cockeyed on the hitchy Z, and I, I found out that I wasn't watching the, the tabs that come down, and you need to check oh, yeah, those periodically right. to make sure they're straight or they're tight. To keep them. Well, they need, they have to grab something to hold that straight. Right. And yeah, when you first put them on, if you install it yourself, you have to loosen screws to, and so they can drop down, and then you can just tighten it back up again. You know, it, 
it's funny, these things are, they're really interesting and, and simple and strong and everything, but they are a little bit fiddly. And you know, there's a handle and there's a, the tabs and you know, it's, it's very a few problems. Yeah. All right, so let's grease this. Well, there's a zerk fitting on here and we don't want to overdo it. So I just put enough in there that I can start to see it somewhere. And that's all we need. And if you guys haven't seen these yet, it's the coolest thing oh. of all time. Oh yeah. It's like such an improvement. You don't have to jerk on it and get it the right angle. Yeah. Grab me a paper towel, please. Thank you. Start out with a mess. So now we'll just get ready. And this one's never been served before, so we no. don't really know how much it had in there. The one we did this morning, I had to put about five or six pounds before I saw anything. Mm -hmm. This one too. Did you just see it seep out around? Yeah, yeah. It, just, it hurts that popping bubble, but you see it come out around and see it a little bit. And that's all we need. Okay, it's just starting to show here. You can see that okay. field's moving away a little bit. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay, so yep. that's plenty. That little air sound. Okay, well that's good to know where to look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Probably with, after you use it some, it'll start showing up, you know, well, here's some speed that right there. Oh, yep. You can lube this with WD-40 if you want, but it, but it leaves that grease behind and collects dirt, and then it gets dirty, and, and that whole receiver piece starts getting dirty on its face and stuff. So it's so better with lithium, probably the same problem. What's that? With lithium grease, same thing. Yeah, yeah it, works, grease, so. it works good, but it makes kind of a mess, so it's better to... I'll show you. What? That silicon... Dry silicone lube. Oh, just the dry salt. Doesn't yeah, like good. Yeah, and it's funny, different manufacturers, it's, it's different material with them. Some of them leave a big white sheet behind and other ones don't. And there's, uh, like at Walmart, they sell a uh, This is what I ended Yeah, that's oh, yeah, what yeah. I get. Now, I'm get not, that on Amazon. I'm not familiar with this particular one. That's what Shane recommended yeah, to me. And I sprayed it on my hitch and this, and it was like, whoa. It hit, hooked up yeah. so quick and easy, and the Listen. handle popped up so nice. So usually what I do is, before I get, you have to shake this? I do, just uh, as a matter of course, I guess. <laughs> it doesn't say it, but, you know, when I get ready to go, I'll just... And then connect. Mm -hmm. And then, where's your, where's your front? Okay, Rick's back there. Pin and safety pin and so this has got this pivot point. This is working really nicely. Mm -hmm. But you know, it wouldn't hurt. That's you. from the spray. Yes, yes. Well, this is the thing that actually is on that. Oh, 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 oh. That has to be rotated. So is that just a uh, Allen wrench? Or is that, uh, or does that just keep the pin from coming? Well, out? I, I don't know, but there's a button. When the button gets pushed, it prevents this from coming, coming out. Coming up. Mm -hmm. And so oh, anyway, nice. it's all part of that deal. So it's nice to put enough of this on it. Can, I know I'm being sloppy with it, but it's nice to get enough in there that it can soak in a little bit, you know? But anyway, this is perfect. That's a great mechanism. It is. And then that. People are so astonished when they see how that works. You yeah. know the other thing? Like, oh my God, because there's always, as a woman, yeah. there's always a guy around. Yeah. Oh, she's not going to be able to back up to that. <laughs> yeah, right. She's right. not going to be able to do it. it and then I just way. back straight up to it. And, and they're like, goes, clink, clink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go, oh my God. Well, yeah. Another what kind of hitch is, is that? You know? Makes your trailer harder to steal. It does. So, you know, on conventional hitches, there's all these, these fancy doodads that lock on there and slide over the ball and lock on and all that kind of stuff, you know, but none of them prevent you from picking it up and taking it away. They just prevent you from hooking onto it in a conventional manner. But you're not going to hook onto this with it in a conventional manner. But the one thing you could do would steal it with the, with the safety chains, you know, and I think that's probably how that happens a lot. So what I did is I, I made these pins, quickly removed pins. So if I'm worried about that, I'll just pull the pins, drop the chains off, and put them somewhere, and then there's no chains there either. Now we got a double thing that's bothered. That's a good idea. It's like, wait a minute. So you, you said they'll pull it with the chain with. They'll just pull well, it with see, Yeah, they, they will. Fit to Jeff it. was talking about just yeah. putting yeah. A, oh, a lock yeah. right through here. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's except what but he still here. can't pick it up. Well, he has yeah. these pins. Yeah, tractor pins. Okay. You just pop, pop out the, you know, yep. the, the R-clip, lift that out, and off they go. 
Okay. But even if, like you're talking about, you know, they'll probably get it down the road. It's nobody, still nobody's got as many hits as either. No, no. So don't sell the receiver to other people that don't already. Have That's right. You have to pull it back. <laughs> a lot of people buy a second receiver because they want to put it on a tractor or their, yeah. or their other truck or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Totally right. Yeah. So anyway, there it is. You're all set. Thank you. Very good. So simple. Thanks for watching. That is everything you need to know about keeping your Mick Hitch working the way it should. Until next time, keep on roaming.